everyone, I'm Anthony Lopinto and I'm here today at Il Fornino in Valley Cottage, New York. And I'm here to show you how to stretch pizzas today. So we have our dough in our flour ready to go. It's important to grab some flour onto your work surface and sprinkle your work surface with the flour. Now, I always tell my cook, season high, so that when the flour comes, it'll spread out in a more even fashion. So we're gonna coat our dough with some flour onto the surface, starting from the middle, very important, press down and work your way out. And continue to do this until you have an even surface of dough. So then, a little flour on your hands, clap, now, I want you to take your hand, push forward, and pull your other hand backwards and turn. Forward and backwards and turn. Forward, backwards, and turn. To finish the pizza, what I like to do is I'll dip my fingers in the flour, make a claw, put your hands under the claw, under the dough, and what I want you to do is open your hands the way a flour opens at the same time. So stretch and stretch. Let gravity bring the dough down until you go all the way around the pizza and you have a nice round circle of pizza dough and back onto your board. Now we're ready to dress our pizza and today we're going to take our pizza peel with a little more flour, okay season high, place the dough onto your pizza peel. And our first pizza of the day will be a seasonal pizza. I always try to cook within the seasons. So whatever is the best and the absolute freshest is what we use at Il Fornino. So I have a roasted butternut squash puree here that we're going to add to our dough. Now important, because the dough is thin, what you want to do is be very careful that you don't puncture the dough. So, spread the puree forward, backwards, okay, in the same motion. You want to leave a little bit of space on the crust, and we don't want too much toppings on the pizza because then the pizza is not going to rise properly and it will be soggy. And no one really likes soggy pizza, let me tell you. You want a nice crisp crust that has a good chew to the dough. Okay, so see how this is spread out? Nice and evenly. Now, what we have here also are some beautiful caramelized onions. We're gonna add some caramelized onions to our pizza. Now, very important, I try to put most of my toppings towards the outside circumference of the pizza. Because as in any type of cooking, what happens is that the heat pushes everything to the middle. So when you're making a roast chicken or a roast beef, what happens is that the heat is surrounding the product and pushing in so all of its juices and everything comes to the center. So what you want to do is have most of your toppings to the outside so that the inside will cook in a much more even fashion. So now I have some beautiful gorgonzola that we are going to add to the pizza. Okay, crumble that around. You wanna get the, the uh, gorgonzola evenly dispersed so that every bite has got that same dynamic, delicious flavor. Okay. Now, we're gonna put that here. We're gonna season our pizza. Fresh black pepper. Once again, season high. We have a really nice, locatelli that we're going to grate on our pizza. There we go. This is looking pretty good. 
I can't wait to chomp into this. There we go. Now, sage, one of my favorite herbs. But let's talk about sage and how delicious this herb is. So sage goes perfectly with butternut squash and gorgonzola. So you have some delicious funkiness and really nice herbaceousness with the sweet caramelized onions and the sweet, sweet butternut squash. But I want to talk about slicing herbs. So I tell my cooks all the time when slicing herbs, it's important that they're sliced properly. So I'm going to show everybody how to slice herbs properly so they don't blacken and bruise. So take your herbs, make a pile, tip of the knife on the cutting board and pull backwards and slice through the herbs themselves. So what you're doing is you are slicing the herbs and you are not bruising them. So what happens, I'm sure everyone has gotten a paper cut before, right? Same concept. Okay, fresh sage. Oh man, this looks really good. And last but not least, salt. Once again, season high so that you'll get an even seasoning. Right now by the oven, and this is the Il Fornino Grande G series and we're gonna cook our pizzas in this beautiful oven. When we have these ovens, what's great is that it comes with a grill brush. So I like to get in there and let's brush the hot embers and dust out of the way. So we have a nice clean surface for our pizza to cook. Now we also have our infrared thermometer to show exactly what the temperature differences are. Up front, we're at 501, about 460. As it goes back, 570, 634, 700. That's exactly what we want. Give your pizza a bit of a shake to make sure that we're free and clear. And now we're gonna load the pizza in the oven. So what I want you to do is tilt your peel a little bit, hands in, and give a quick shake and pull out. Now sometimes with the pizza, the top might not get the color that you truly want. So I want to show everybody a very important technique when you're using these beautiful outdoor ovens. So once you feel that your crust is set and you have the color that you want, I want you to take your peel, get underneath the pizza itself, and lift it to the roof. You want the flames and the intense heat up top of these ovens to brown the top of your pizzas. That's how you finish pizzas in the Il Fornino oven. And this is not just no ordinary oven. This is the Grande G series. There we go. So what I like to do with my pizzas, once they come out of the oven, as soon as they come out of the oven, is to take a finishing olive oil and drizzle it lightly over the pizza. The reason for this is because you want the residual heat of the pizza to heat the oil so that it spreads. And every single bite, you have the beautiful intensity of this pizza with the extra virgin olive oil. This has characteristics that's bold, spicy, and peppery.